Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Shear's classroom again. Uh, this time we're going to take a look at electric motors. Uh, this is a basic introduction, so it'll give you some ideas to how electric motors work. Alright, for now we'll limit it to a direct current or DC motor. And shown here you can see a simplistic design of an electric motor. Uh, but this design is functional and makes a great basis for a science project. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Alright, the switch was flipped up here, allowing our circuit to be complete. And we see the center of our motor is turning. With the switch closed, we have powered circuit. The motor turns, but exactly how does this work? Let's take it apart and look at each individual component. Okay, the first two components we'll look at are called the armature, which is this kind of yellow, uh, it's, it's kind of a square rectangle here. It's labeled there with a north and a south pole. And in the center is a blue structure called the commutator. Uh, these two work together to produce some of the main uh, functioning of an electric motor. The armature consists of a copper wire that will carry a current of electricity in a circle out one side and back into the other side of the commutator. Notice the north and south indicators. These are here because when you pass an electrical current through a wire, you produce a magnetic field. So this armature component is essentially an electric magnet or electromagnet. I put some plus and minus signs uh, as indicators to show that there's a current flowing through the wire. Now let's trace the current flow that produces our magnetic field. Here we can see that the current flows from one side back into the other. We now have a magnet that's powered by electricity that we apply to the copper wire of the armature. In most electric motors, the armature consists of a giant mass of cold up copper wires designed to produce a much larger magnetic field so the motor can turn much faster. But this is the essential idea, and when our magnet is powered, it'll try to attract and repel against anything metal nearby. Speaking of repelling, what would happen if we reverse the polarity of our electric current? Yes, a reversing of the flow direction of the current also reverses the north and south pole of the armature. This becomes very important for keeping an electric motor turning. It's not enough to make our armature attract to something. We also need the ability to switch the north and south poles at exactly the right moment to keep our armature from stopping once it flips direction. So imagine a switch that we can throw forward and back to flip the magnet around in a regular pattern. Push on this side, pull on that side, push on that side, pull on this side. Just like when you're on a bicycle. You can't keep pushing down on one side without alternately pushing down on the other side. Pushing the pedal down on one side, then pushing the pedal down on the other side keeps the bicycle going, just like an electric motor. When you ride a bike, you automatically know how to alternate your pushes. But how do we get an electric motor to do this? The answer is that center blue part called the commutator. The commutator is a circular structure in the center of the diagram shown here in blue. This commutator is split into two sides, each side representing a different side of the circuit. Since the commutator will be spinning with the armature, when it turns to the other side, the current will flip also, then flip back, then flip again, as long as the armature spins, which it will continue to do until the power is shut off. Pretty neat. Let's take a look at the flipping current. So as the current flips direction, so do the poles of the magnet. Okay, so one problem. How do we get the electricity to the moving parts of the motor? Well, in simplest terms, we'll have to rub some wires on the commutator to make contact and send our electrical current into the commutator and armature. Since there'll be a lot of friction and heat produced at that point, we might need to find a better material suited to the conditions as copper and other metals will wear out quickly. 
Turns out that mixing carbon or graphite into the copper gives us a suitable material, with graphite even providing some lubrication to keep everything spinning. The actual components that make contact with the commutator are called brushes. I've labeled the brushes here with a red and a plus sign to indicate the positive uh, current side and then a negative and black brush to indicate the negative side. So now we have an electric magnet aka armature indicated here by the north and south. We also have an alternating switch called the commutator which is shown in blue in the center. And we've added in a current source with a battery and a switch that's currently open, not allowing the current to flow. But you can imagine that if the switch was closed, that current would be able to flow through this circuit. Our electrical circuit is complete. So once we flip the switch, the electricity can flow from one side to the other with very little problems. But if we throw the switch now, nothing happens. We haven't given the electromagnet anything to act against. So what do magnets like to act on? Metals. But what do they like to act on even more than metals? Other magnets. So now we've inserted some permanent magnets into this device. Let's take a quick look at how all the forces will interact when the motor is turned on. Recall that opposite poles of magnets attract and like poles of magnets repel. So a south near a south will repel. A north near a north will repel. A south near a north will attract and a north near a south will attract. Here are some arrows. Okay, so our yellow arrows here show that this part of the armature is going to want to move towards this north pole. Once it gets here, they'll flip it'll be north and they'll repel and this will want to go in this direction. So it's almost like the bicycle analogy. Uh, we get a push and pull uh, going on to spin the center of our motor. Okay, but let's back up a minute. Since our armature is not energized because our switch is still open, the only forces present are those from the permanent magnet. In the present situation, the forces are not balanced so I'll move our armature to show a more accurate arrangement. Now the motor is in its resting position. Notice how the brushes are just barely resting on the beginning blue parts of the commutator. Here we have the positive brush just barely hitting this side of the commutator and the negative hitting the other side. That's going to allow this current to flow through this side and around and around. They're exactly where they need to be to send the electrical currents into the armature as soon as we flip the switch. If the split in the commutator were straight up and down, we might not get a current to flow across the armature and the motor would never start. By offsetting the split slightly to the side, we ensure that the motor will start and that the electromagnetic field will flip at exactly the right time to keep it spinning. So let's go ahead and flip the switch and see what happens next. I'm kind of excited. For a second there, I wasn't sure we had everything set, but it's working great. Notice how the north and south poles of the electromagnet flip orientation at precisely the right time due to the commutator. The south becomes north, the north becomes south. Remember my example of riding a bicycle and pushing on the pedals? Now our motor is doing the exact same thing. It's alternating between pushing and pulling to keep itself spinning. They say you never forget how to ride a bike, and our motor will never forget to flip the magnetic pole thanks to the design of our armature and commutator. Now let's step up our design to see if we can't turn this thing into a super motor. Whoa, look at this thing. So I added more permanent magnets. More, more, more. I added more arms to the armature. More, more, more. I added more splits to the commutator. More, more, more. Okay, okay. I didn't add any more brushes, but in an ideal situation, each armature would be energized with the correct orientation so that the armature is maximizing its potential to spin. Let's turn this thing on and see what happens. 
Woo, so there it is, electric motors in a nutshell. Hopefully you found this video informative enough to click that little subscribe button. It'll help notify you of my next fantastic video. Then hit the like or thumbs up button on the way out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.